Heroes and half. Okay. Okay, she's angry. She's angry. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Zwyan Pals. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise has had a weird history with the movies. The first movie was awesome. I think most people can agree that, especially for a comic book movie, a movie focusing on cartoon characters and just a, a franchise that was really just starting off. That movie ended up being way better than he had any right to be, and you could just tell they were taking the franchise seriously. And then ever since then, the the Turtles franchise has been real up or down with some really big low points, and a handful of points where it's just like, oh, look, this is a decent movie. And the last movie in the franchise we've gotten was the first Teenage Mutant Turtles movie produced by Michael Bay. That movie is garbage. But if that movie was the cost we had to go and pay to get this movie... <laughs> you're a rhinoceros! And you're a... Huh. I'm a little piggy! Then it was almost worth it. It wasn't worth it because that movie was garbage. But gosh, this movie was good. It gives me hope for just Michael Bay <laughs> and just the franchise in general. Let me start by talking about the movie that came before this, the first Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie and my biggest issue with that movie. And because that'll help you understand why I like this one so much. The first movie I can get over the terrible plots and story that made no sense. I can get over the crappy CG Frankenstein turtle creatures they created. What I can't get over is how boring that movie was. The movie isn't necessarily bad, it's just nothing happens and they kind of take the soul out of the characters. The main turtles should be the, the driving force of these movies, but instead we were forced to focus on April O'Neil, Megan Fox's character, and the turtles, instead of these iconic characters with these very iconic traits, we get to know who they are based on their clothing more than anything. We get to know, oh, Donatello is the smart one because he has glasses, and Raph is the tough guy because he has a bandana, and Mikey is the party boy because he's got a skateboard, and none of the characters themselves really portrayed that. And it was like taking the soul out of the turtles. I mean, it's, it's missing the entire point of them and what makes them so special in my eyes. The key to the turtles in general, and I feel like in every medium the turtles have ever been in, is that they're brothers and that they each have such distinct personalities. And then the personalities how they play off each other has always been just enjoyable and important. The strength of the characters throughout the history is them as a unit and how they are able to complement each other. To a point that this movie actually has a point where Splinter goes and tells Leo, hey listen, Leo wants everyone to be soldiers, and he's just like, no, your brothers are all different and you should play up to their strengths, not try making them all just generic soldiers. And if you look at the Turtles as a franchise, part of the reason it survives so well, and part of the reason why everyone has these affinity to certain characters over others, personally I think Donatello is the best, but other people will go and say Raph and Mikey, no one likes Leo, is because they are so different. If you look at comic book movies, if you look at cartoons and different things with groups of characters fighting crime or whatever, the turtles aren't super special in the action department. I mean, they got ninja weapons. Ooh, cool, he swings a sword around and, and he's got a bow staff. Ooh, this is great. It's how they play off each other that's always been important. I, I always found the most interesting issues of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the most issues, interesting parts of any of the shows or the movies has always been the points where there isn't any fighting, there's nothing crazy going on, it's just the brothers interacting with each other. And that's something that this movie focuses on in abundance. There are so many scenes where they are just having a good time, or they're exploring the city, or they're joking around with people, or they're just enjoying their life and you can see how they interact with each other and how they Mikey's just joking around and they're all just amused by his antics and Leo's being stern and Raph is being tough and Donnie's just geeking out and they're all just embracing the differences of each other. And I loved that they did that because that's always been the important part of the characters for me. The, my favorite comic ever for the Turtles is when they're stuck on the farm where they're just recuperating and just being themselves. The movie has a lot of that which is 
is a miracle because they did not have a huge running time and they fit in a lot of other stuff too. Characters wise, let me list a handful of the characters. We got the Turtles. We have April O'Neil is back. She has a handful of screen time. She doesn't have as much as last year. She's not movie Jesus and just saving everyone's life every five minutes, but she's in the movie pretty, pretty extensively. We've got uh, Green Arrow here, and now he has hockey pucks, and he makes rollerblades out of a chair at one point, I think, with duct tape. That was weird, but he's in it, and he's awesome. And then we got Job from Arrested Developments in there, and he's just being a douche everywhere, and he's great. And they all get their own time to shine, so awesome. We get some heroes there. Uh, on the villain department, we have we have so many characters, they put so much in this movie. Uh, Shredder's in this. Shredder is probably the character that gets shafted the most in this movie, which is kind of amazing because he's the one that you would normally think is the big bad of the Turtles. And he's he's in it, but he basically gets tossed around by the plot. Doesn't do anything <laughs> noteworthy, but he's very intimidating and I think there's a lot of potential for him in the future if they ever make a new one. And then we have a series of characters all making their movie debuts. The first two are Bebop and Rocksteady, first time ever in a live action movie, first time in a movie period, and they're awesome. They're absolutely perfect, and they, they if there's any characters that are people are gonna say like stole the show, these two stole the show. They are complete idiots, they're just bumbling around, enjoying themselves, they have a catchphrase that you're going to love, and they are just so enjoyably stupid, and just, they're just so fun, and every single time they're on screen it's an absolute pleasure, and I'm so happy that they, they look great, they are, they're, they're perfect, they're exactly how I'd want them to be, and the casting for that is amazing too. We got Baxter Stockman in live action, played by Terry, uh, Tyler Perry, which is perfect too, and he's just, pretty sure Tyler Perry himself even said like he wanted to play it as a evil Neil deGrasse Tyson, which, yeah, no, he was great. Uh, I really hope that they, they had a really, it, they had a moment where they could have made a joke about him being an insect later on in life and they didn't take it, I'm really bummed about that, but I really hope that they bring that character back and really make the most of him. He was great. And lastly, we have Krang and his evil robot body and the Technodrome, and that is the most serious I've ever seen Krang taken. And it's great because he's still a giant piece of chewed gum, which they make that joke multiple times. And it's perfect because he's so badass looking. And you can take him as a credible villain for once instead of. <laughs> And they have all of those villains, all in this movie. And as you can guess, with all of the turtle stuff and the villains, there's a lot of plot shit that they have just trying to get uh, crammed in this movie. They have, they have, oh, we have to go and get all the pieces to the teleporter thing, but also our friends are, getting, are in trouble with the cops, so we have to go and save them. Also, the cops are gonna be hunting us down, so we need to make sure that's not happening. Also, there's the ooze. We need to go and find the ooze and study it. And also, maybe the ooze can make us human. Also, we want to be able to blend in with society. And they have all of this stuff happening along with the usual like, the, the usual like Leo and Raph having their fights and and all the side characters with their own shit. And they have all of that crammed in along with action scenes and somehow they make it work. Not because this movie is well written because it's not. They exposit the hell out of everything. Like every situation ever, there's just this giant explanation. Luckily they're able to play it off with Donnie being like, oh, Donnie's smart, so Donnie will just explain it, and then they say it in Lamont's turns, but like, they really, they spend a lot of the time explaining it, and they squeeze it all in so haphazardly, and, and if you really digest this movie, it's it's not a technically sound movie, like, it is, it is not well done, but they fasten the furious the shit out of this movie, like, whoever was writing it just did not give a shit, and they're like, oh, what do you guys want to do next? And they're like, oh, let's just have them jump out of a plane. All right, cool. I'll put them, they're going to jump out of a plane. And, and then, then the next plane, we'll go and blow it up. And they're like, oh, cool, we'll blow it up. And and then, what if we had a tank that was shooting at them from a waterfall? They're like, yeah, I'll do that. And what if we had them driving a garbage truck, shooting manhole covers at a helicopter, and then... <sighs> This movie's crazy. It's crazy. If you want to enjoy this movie, don't go in thinking. It's not a thinking piece. You just go in, you enjoy it for what it is, you laugh at every joke because it's hilarious, and you just love... I mean, it's the turtles. 
they're not meant to be taken seriously. These guys are, they're strong, I mean, yeah, okay. They, their original comic was serious as hell, but it was a parody. It, the turtles are meant to just be fun, and you get to see brothers be brothers, and that's what you get out of this movie. It's just a really good ride. Don't make it too serious, don't make it too crazy, just these characters are what they are, and let them be what they're supposed to be. If you go into this movie, if you're a turtles lover, you'll love this movie. If you go in expecting some artsy bullshitty piece, you're, it's it's kind of, I mean, this is not your, this is, this is a movie for kids, but if you go in just ready for just a fun time, you're golden. I don't care how poorly written it is, and I don't care that they still like look like giant steroided freaks. This movie was a lot of fun, and I am so happy that the franchise is in a right, going in a good direction. Did I mention that I love the Ninja Turtles? I love the Ninja Turtles. Anyway, thank you for joining me, and uh, if you liked my review, feel free to subscribe to my Facebook or my YouTube, or I have a Twitter account, and then you'll get first knowledge of any time I do any more reviews or videos. I'm probably going to do other videos someday. And if you don't feel like doing that, cool. My name is Y, I hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time.